brain is trying to figure this out, Derek. So just go ahead and hit the first one. There you go. Anybody see that one? Try another one. Not quite as easy to see. Can you tell what that is? Okay. Do another one. Uh huh. Who is that? Who is it? Oh. Okay. I think I think I have seen it from time to time. All right, turn the lights back on up here. Now, check out that one. The first three are from a collection of Steve Newman. Steve Newman is our, that I know of, there may be somebody better that I don't know about, but he is the resident pumpkin carver. For a number of years, that has always been on my list of things to do on Halloween night because he has all these pumpkins he's carved and he lays them out there and puts them up and ha he takes a couple of days off work just to sit and carve pumpkins. And some of those things are incredible. If you want to see his work, those of you who do Facebook, he's on there and a bunch of his stuff is there. So you can check that out. Now, I've tried to carve pumpkins and it just doesn't work. I mean, they fall apart, they cave in, and furthermore, I try to carve what I draw. And since I can't draw, the carving looks just like what I drew. Nothing. That's just how it works. Well, because of the time of year, every now and then I do one of these things we're doing this year, sort of like um, toward the end of the year we started, like these modern day parables that Jesus would have told. And we're using the theme, a Christian is like, and I believe it was Lee Pence. Wasn't that you that gave it to me? Yep, she was. And she did it right. She wrote it out on a napkin and handed it to me. So if you have an idea, you write your points as to what you think a Christian is like on the thing that you give me, and we'll look into it. And so she said, well, you know, the time of year is coming up, and a Christian is like a jack-o'-lantern. And I said, you know what? That just might work. I mean, I know some Christians who are like some of those jack-o'-lanterns. Don't you? I mean, the, the ones that are frowning and mean and ugly. I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about a Christian. The concept of a child of God. I want to use three passages to teach the lesson, most of which Lee had come up with. Turn your Bibles to 1 Corinthians. We're going to use the passage just read in 1 Corinthians 1, 26 to 31. Then you can turn over in Mark chapter 6, verse 11, and at the end of that chapter, verses 18 through 20. And we're going to find out in these verses how a Christian can be compared to a jack-o'-lantern. Here we go. A Christian is no longer in the place he was before. Not in the same place. Look what we just read in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Notice what he says. Number one, a Christian is called. Called. Called how? Called where? He talks about God has taken the foolish things of the world to put to nothing. He's, he's saying, I'm showing to the world that the wisdom that the world has, not a lot of wisdom. God shows that the greatest thing that the world has is really, in another passage he says, the wisdom of the world is foolishness with God, right? Well, he is saying, look, you are called. To these Christians, he said, you have been called. Now, here's the problem. This is why he wrote the book of 1 Corinthians. Those of you that have read it, which, by the way, you have another two weeks to finish, starting today, 1st 
and 2 Corinthians. That's the book, those are the books we're reading as a congregation this month. People are running for pens and paper. I didn't know that. Yeah, I told you two weeks ago. All right, two more weeks. And when you find it, when you read it, here's what you'll find. He wrote 1 Corinthians to a church filled with trouble. When you read 1 Corinthians, have you ever thought, I don't want to be a member of that church? You ever thought about that? If you were shopping around for a congregation to be a part of, and you were using the resumes of the churches in the New Testament, how many people would choose Corinth and say, that's where I'm going to go? Nobody. We just wouldn't do it. Man, they had all kinds of problems. And so one of the reasons why he wrote to them was to say, we got to stop. You have to stop. You know why? Because you became a Christian. And you were called, how? Out of and away from. You're not where you used to be. And that is the truth. Every Christian has been called. But guess what? Every person has been called. We're called by the gospel, Paul said. We have been called by God through the gospel. We're also called by the life of Jesus. Here is a man who gave his life for us, and he's calling us to him. That's why when he said, as we've been talking on Sunday mornings, his great call, come to me, take my yoke, learn from me. Every Christian has been called from where he was to where he is. Notice number two in this text. Every Christian is chosen. Chosen. Verse 30, you are in Christ Jesus. You have been chosen in Jesus. Now let's not think that God is being unfair here. Some teach it in a way that makes it that way. He is not saying, God calls some, and some he just overlooks. He wants these to be saved. He's decided for these to be lost. That's how some teach it. That's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches that God has called everybody. How so? Jesus died for everybody. And his call went out to everybody. And it's been identified in Scripture. Everybody's called. And once you've been called, and in Jesus you are chosen. That is, I'm one of the chosen ones because I'm in Jesus. Now, to these people who represent some of the worst attitudes and actions that you see people doing in Scripture. These people, he said, you have to stop because you are no longer where you used to be. If you're a Christian, you've been called out and chosen in. Turn to the second one. 1 Corinthians 6. Let's look at verse 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 11. And such were some of you. I just said these people had some problems. They sure did. Verse 9. Do you not know the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, idolaters, adulterers, homosexuals, sodomites, Thieves, covetous, drunkards, revilers, extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. This church was filled with people who, whose lives were radically different at one time. So what's he saying? Just like the jack-o'-lantern. That is not where it once was. It's been removed from the field and brought into your house. Number two, it's not the same person or the same thing that it used to be. It's just not. 
That pumpkin was out there for a whole different concept. It was a totally different thing. But now, instead of being a food that many people like, I don't like it at all. I can't think of one thing, pumpkin, that I like. In taste, in smell, nothing. It's just a fact. Don't need pumpkin pie, don't need pumpkin bread, don't need pumpkin cookies, don't know what pumpkin, I don't, just don't, I just don't like them at all, period. Don't, don't give me anything pumpkin. You know, some would say, no, I'm not going to say it. Here's the idea. It's not what it was. He says, such were some of you. This church was filled with people whose lives look just like these two verses. But, notice what he says. You were washed. You take that pumpkin out of the field. Maybe it's got dirt and mud all over it. You take it in, you give it a bath. Wash it up. We're going to carve it and make something nice out of it. And God says, you were out there in the world. You were muddied and dirtied. And I called you. And I chose you. And I cleaned you up. And I washed you. The word wash means to cleanse away from. It's not just the ceremonial thing that the Jews went through where they would just run water over their arms and say, well, I have been clean. That's not what it's saying. This word wash means to immerse fully and then to pull the plug and let it run far away. That's this word washed. God said, I cleaned you up. And I sent what was dirty so far away that I don't remember it anymore. See, God forgets. When God washes, He forgets. It's over. It's finished. Because it's far away. Number two, you were sanctified. You take that pumpkin... You're going to make the jack-o'-lantern, and after you wash it up, you start the cutting procedure. After you clean it out, you take the top off, and you get all that gooey stuff out of there, and the stuff that's there, you get it out of the way and throw it away, and you're making a big mess. But then you start cutting on it and turning it into something admirable. You know what God says that Jesus did? He took dirty old us and he cleaned us up. And then he started cutting. The word sanctified means to separate. To separate. When it's talking about things or persons, it means to set aside for a particular purpose. But when it's talking about character or quality or nature, it means to cut it away from what was bad, leaving the good. Sanctified. As a Christian, you've been set aside for God's purpose. And in His time and in His way, He cut off the bad and sent it far away where He doesn't remember it anymore. And you've been justified. Justified. The debt's been covered. The debt's been paid. You see, in Phil's illustration, it's right. That debt was forgiven. In the situation of God, he didn't just forgive. He paid it. He paid it. 
So justified means the debt has been paid. When you hear people, and I don't like how people are when the newscasters get a hold of them after crime and you know those kinds of things. I want my justice. I want justice. What they mean is they want revenge. That's what they mean. But justice is what the court system is set up to do. Pay the debt. Justice without Jesus is not what we want. Right? Because without Jesus, we have to pay the debt. So I got to die. So justice is, I'm justified because God paid my debt for me. And now it's finished. Now, here's the point. That pumpkin was pulled out of the field from where it used to be. Cleaned up, washed up, carved, and then set out there. And it's not what it used to be. Not the person it was. Number three, verse 18, same chapter. Flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does is outside his body, but he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, you're not your own? Okay, number three. A Christian is no longer where in that former place and is no longer that former person and is no longer doing what he used to do. We're in a different place. We're different people and we do different things. Therefore, here's the charge. Flee sexual immorality. Why? You have the Spirit in you. Hmm. You were cleaned up, carved out. Your debt was paid and canceled. And now you can't do what you used to do. You, here's the charge. Flee. But here's the commission. Verse 20. You were bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. There's your commission. You take that pumpkin out, pull it out of the field, clean it up, take it from where it was, change it from what it was, and commission it to do something different than it used to do. That's exactly what a Christian is. And God has taken us out of the world, cleaned us up, carved us out, which, by the way, that process is never fully finished till we leave. He set us up, paid our debts, and now he's given us a charge and a commission. And notice what it says at the end. Glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. When that pumpkin sits up there and you put that light inside the pumpkin and it begins to glow, what is it doing? It is signaling to everyone who sees it, look at my creator. When, when you see those things, you go, wow, somebody spent some time. Or you go, I bet a three-year-old did that one. You do one of the two, right? But whichever way you go, you always say, wow, look who did. When a Christian is like a jack-o'-lantern, people look at you and say, wow, look what the Creator did. Let your light so shine before men that they will see your good works and do what? Glorify your Father who is in heaven. 
So, we sing in chapel every Thursday. This little Christian light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Just like a jack-o'-lantern. Set it up. Let it shine. And then you are now commissioned to do something you did not do before. Like a jack-o'-lantern. You're not the place you were, you're not the person you were, and you don't do the things you did. I think that's a great one, Lee, that when we're walking around that night, maybe you'll think of these concepts. Pretty good, huh? I like that. It's a good one. In fact, all of these are so good that it's probably saying to some of you, ooh, I don't want to turn one in. Mine's not that good. Well. Turn it in. I'll give you full credit and make it look really good. <laughs> Excellent stuff. Before we leave, have you allowed Jesus to carve you out like he wants? Washed or not? Changed or not? We're here to help you. If you need us, will you come as we